Hi, Sprout Up scientists. My nature name is Snail, and welcome back to Sprout Up Explorers. So this week on Sprout Up Explorers, we're gonna be learning all about the ocean. So a few weeks ago, we did a lesson all about freshwater and brackish water ecosystems. So this week, we're gonna learn about the last remaining water ecosystem, the ocean. So just to review, an ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things that all exist together in the same area. And the ocean is my absolute favorite ecosystem because it's so cool and there's so little that's known about it. So have you ever been to the ocean? If so, what did you love about it? And if you haven't ever been to the ocean, think about what kinds of things you're curious to learn about it. So the ocean is really cool because it makes up 70% of the Earth's surface, meaning it's huge. But even though it's so big, only about 20% of the ocean has been explored. So it's huge and it's so mysterious, and today we're gonna get to learn all about it. So because the ocean is so big, let's break it down a little bit. The ocean can be broken down into different layers or zones. So the first zone that we wanna talk about is the intertidal zone. So the intertidal zone is where the ocean meets land, and it's also where you'll find things like tide pools, beaches, and coral reefs. And then a little further out from the intertidal zone is called the sunlight zone, which is the layer of the ocean where sunlight can reach. And that's where most of the plants and animals in the ocean like to hang out. There's things like fish, whales, dolphins, plankton, squid, all kinds of cool stuff in the sunlight zone. And then below the sunlight zone are the twilight zone and the darkness zone, which is where no sunlight reaches and animals have all kinds of crazy cool tricks to survive in the dark. So those tricks for surviving in different places are also called adaptations. So now we're gonna go and explore each of those zones of the ocean and learn all about the different animals that live there. And we'll also get to learn about all of those animals' different adaptations to survive. So first, we're gonna start with the intertidal zone and to explore it, we're gonna go tide pooling. Hi, Sprout Up friends, it's Sunflower and I'm here at the Pacific Ocean in San Luis Obispo, California. Now the Pacific Ocean is a little different than the Atlantic Ocean because it's less salty than the Atlantic Ocean, and it's also the biggest ocean and the deepest ocean, and it covers almost 30% of Earth's surface. And here there are a lot of tide pools. So tide pools are areas between the rocks in the surface that have little um, chunks carved out where certain animals can live, like sea anemones and crabs. So I just wanna show you this little spot I found where there's a lot of sea anemones. And if you look, there's lots of shells of crabs around the sea anemones, and these two animals work together to provide food for each other so that they can live in these little tide pools. So here's a tide pool with a lot of life going on. We have some sea anemones and some crabs that are cohabitating in this ecosystem. And crabs are very cool animals because they've been adapted to live both in the water and outside of the water. So you'll see there's some crabs that are crawling around inside the water, and then there's some that are out here outside of the water. Hi, Sprout Up scientists, it's Snail again. So I'm here by a tide pool along the Atlantic Ocean. So try to think about how my tide pool might be a little bit different from Sunflower's tide pool, which is on the Pacific Ocean. So I am at a tide pool along the intertidal zone, which means that the tide pools and the animals living in them have to deal with the tides. So that means that when the tide comes in, these animals are exposed to the water and have to live underwater. And when the tide goes out, the animals have to be able to live above water or in a tide pool. So these animals have to have a lot of interesting adaptations to live in these tide pools. So let's go explore one together and see what we can find. All right, so here's the Atlantic Ocean, and then right below me is this tide pool. So the tide has gone out enough that this tide pool is now visible, and you can see my shadow above it recording it. And you can see that the most common thing in this tide pool is really just a bunch of snails. But you can see 
that there is actually a crab making an entrance right there. Do you see him? He's trying to hide under this little piece of seaweed because he thinks I can't see him and that I don't know about him, but we can all see him. He's right there. There's also in this tide pool, a mussel. A mussel is kind of like a clam, but a little bit smaller. Do you think you can see the mussel in here? It is right there. That's the mussel. And it's got its mouth open a little bit because what this mussel does is it opens its mouth, it takes in ocean water and it filters it through its body and it takes out the plankton which you'll learn from Clementine later what a plankton is. And the plankton is what this mussel eats. I also pulled a couple of snails out of the water. I'm gonna put them back in, don't worry. But you can see one of them is upside down, this one. And that little black circle in the middle, that's the uh, snail's body. And then this other snail right here, that guy is sticking out one of his little antennae. He just pulled it back in inside of his shell. And there he goes sticking it out again and that little antenna is how this snail senses the world all around him and that's how these guys are able to survive in tide pools because they have these awesome antennae that can sense the world and they also have this shell that protects them all right sprout up scientists thank you so much for exploring the intertidal zone with me and with sunflower so the next thing that we're going to chat about is the sunlight zone which is that bit of ocean behind me where the ocean meets the sky that is the sunlight zone and that's where most of the life in the ocean lives and we're going to talk all about it so in the sunlight zone one of the most common animals is a fish so we are going to talk all about fish anatomy and anatomy is just a fancy word that scientists use when they talk about the parts of an animal's body. So we're going to talk all about the parts of a fish. And in the sunlight zone, lots of fish feed on plankton. And if they're bigger fish, they might even eat some smaller fish. So we're going to start with a circle. And a circle is oftentimes the shape of a fish's body. But if we're just looking at a circle, that's not a fish. There are lots of things that we need to add to this fish. So the first thing I can think of that we need to add to this fish is an eye. Obviously fishes use their eye to see, but if they're in the darkness zone, they might use their eye to sense movement around them. Fish also have a mouth. That's how they eat. And another thing fish have is gills because fish don't have lungs like us. They breathe with their gills. And another thing that a fish have a lot of are fins. And the fins on the top of the fish are called dorsal fins. And they kind of use those to swim back and forth in the water. Another important fin that fish have are its tail fin. Another word for the tail fin is the caudal fin. And the tail fin helps to move the fish forward in the water. And then a lot of fish have this fin on the side, which is called a pectoral fin. And then a lot of fish also have some fins on the bottom, which are called ventral fins. And all of those fins help to move the fish throughout the water in different directions. Another thing a fish has is called a lateral line, which is a sensory organ to help it detect vibrations in the water around it. And the last thing are scales, which of course the fish are covered in. Clementine here. So today I'm going to be talking about plankton. So plankton actually comes from the Greek word for wander. An organism is considered a plankton if it is carried by the tides and currents of the ocean instead of swimming on its own. Plankton are usually very small, often less than one inch in length. So smaller than this. Because they provide a crucial source of food to many aquatic organisms like whales and fish, they are the reason why there's so much biodiversity in the ocean. Biodiversity, as you remember, is the existence of many different kinds of plants and animals in an environment. 
So the twilight zone lies about 650 to 3,300 feet below the ocean surface, so just beyond the reach of sunlight. It is a deep, dark, watery world where temperatures stay close to freezing. There are lots of really cool animals in the twilight zone, like giant fish, and if you've seen Finding Nemo, an anglerfish, which is a fish with a glowing light coming out of its head. The reason the animals in the twilight zone look like they come from science fiction movies is that they've adapted themselves to their conditions. So for example, the anglerfish has a glowing light because it's dark in the twilight zone and it uses it to see. The animals in the twilight zone also support themselves by eating dead plankton, animals, and other fish that fall down from the areas of the ocean that are closer to the surface. So some twilight zone animals also migrate to the surface each night and then return to deep waters during the day. So they get their food at the surface of the ocean and then come down. So another zone in the ocean is called the darkness zone. This darkness zone makes up about 83% of the ocean. The darkness zone is very cold and there's also no light, meaning that there are no plants producing oxygen. This means that many organisms living in this zone have adapted themselves to be able to survive without oxygen. Another interesting thing about the animals that live here is that they're blind and colorless because there's no light. So the ocean is amazing for many reasons. It provides an ecosystem for sea life to live, it provides food and transportation for us, and it also provides a lot of beauty and a fun place for us to visit. So because of all these things, we need to keep the ocean clean. And we can do that by making sure that we never litter near the ocean and that if we see trash, we always pick it up. Thank you so much to Sunflower and Clementine for exploring the ocean with us. So to review, the ocean zones that we explored are the sunlight zone, the intertidal zone, the twilight zone, and the darkness zone. We also got to learn all about tide pools, fish, plankton, and how important the ocean is to plants, animals, and humans. So whether you live right near the ocean or super far away from it, the ocean has probably touched your life in some way. Maybe you've eaten a fish from the ocean, maybe you've gone swimming in the ocean, or maybe you're just curious about it and want to visit it someday. Either way, we hope you had fun exploring with us today about the ocean. Don't forget to check out the worksheets um, for this video for even more fun activities about the ocean. Thanks so much for exploring with us today, Sprout Up Scientists. We'll see you next week.